So one thing nobody can argue is the Nintendo Switch has a lot of games. I mean, Nintendo themselves even did a marketing campaign based on that statement. Whether you're talking about big AAA games, smaller indie games, and pretty much everything in between, the Nintendo Switch has a great variety of titles for really everyone to enjoy. But as the Nintendo Switch has been around for five years now, there's been games that have come and gone, games that we saw, games that maybe people got really hyped up about, but then they just sort of vanished into thin air. So today on the channel, I want to talk about five Nintendo Switch games that you're never going to play. These games are not coming to the system for a variety of reasons some of these situations are much more interesting than others so we're going to crack some clues here and have some fun so if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit the bell notification as well but without any further ado let's talk about five nintendo switch games you're never going to play now longtime people who have been following the nintendo switch will definitely remember this first game it actually got a trailer around the initial media blitz of the nintendo switch system itself a lot of people were looking at this game and they were like wow this looks really good this is running on the nintendo switch maybe this system is capable of more than we thought it would be and that game was of course a game called seasons of heaven now the first time we saw seasons of heaven was back in december of 2016 a very long time ago for a lot of gamers and this game like i said it was sort of an action adventure open world pseudo open world game it was kind of hard to tell but we did get a initial trailer that was almost five minutes long showcasing really the graphics engine of this game now people got excited for it they the team behind the game started doing like internet circuits and you know talking with different youtubers and different websites doing interviews and stuff and then everything just got really quiet we then came to find out that the development team never even asked for Nintendo Switch SKUs to have development systems for them. They ended up releasing a book based on the game that hadn't even come out yet that was supposedly causing some problems with the development of the game, and then the game has just seemingly vanished. So what do I think ended up happening with this? Well, as someone who's been around the gaming industry for quite a while now, 10 plus years, and someone who used to do a lot of writing on websites, you see a lot of small companies try to get their name out there with things that are either brand new or things that are struggling. I remember back on the Wii U when I was uh, editor in chief for Nintendo Enthusiast, companies would always pitch these game ideas to us and it would come into my email box and they would want like people to get excited for it. Like I remember there was a football game because the Switch didn't or the Wii U didn't have a new football game and there was a new football game that was supposedly coming out. They hyped it up, they sent me a bunch of press materials and then it was radio silence. I feel like these companies just want to get their name out there and are hopeful that maybe something could come to fruition from this, but it doesn't end up happening. You're seeing this right now with the abandoned game that was supposedly a new survival horror game that was coming to the PlayStation 5. Everyone was really hyped up about it. Is Kojima involved in it? And it just turns out that it was just a marketing campaign gone terribly wrong. I think Seasons of Heaven at its core was just a tech demo, an Unreal tech demo that was used just sort of as an asset flip, pre-made assets used on an Unreal tech demo and then just inserted into a game. And then it sort of gave the illusion that it was an actual game. I don't think you'll ever see this game. I don't think this game ever was intended to come out. I don't think this game ever existed. You know why they decided to do this? Uh, we'll probably never have the answer, but this is actually a lot more common than a lot of people believe. And it's something that unfortunately is just prevalent in the video game industry. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. The next game we're going to talk about is a bit of a deep cut because out of all the games on this list, this is the game I wanted to play the most. This is the game I wanted to own the most on the Nintendo Switch, and that is a game called Skater XL. Now, skateboarding games are starting to become a little bit more common on the Nintendo Switch. You have games like the Ollie Ollie series. You have Skate City. You, of course, have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remaster, but these are all arcade style games, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love a good arcade style skateboarding game, but I'm someone who has skateboarded since I was like 11 and you know while i might not get out there all that much anymore because my knees are shot i used to have very many fond memories of skateboarding some of my favorite memories of all time are from the skate scene and the skates culture maybe one day on the secondary channel i will tell the story about how in high school we pretty much took over a skate park held an illegal concert for 12 different bands there to raise money to actually legally own the skate park and then a kid got lit on fire and the cops kept coming yeah it was a wild night 
it was it was a wild night but skater xl was different than those games because it was a more realistic style game we've seen games recently with the skate series of course ps1 skateboarding fans had thrasher skate and destroy which was a more realistic experience and this game is actually released on other platforms skater xl was included in a 2020 nintendo direct presentation as coming to the switch and then the development team was like oh yeah you know this trailer didn't look all that great but this was an older build we're still working on the game and it's gonna look and run great on the switch and that was pretty much the last time we heard about that game. I've actually tried to contact them via Instagram because they're always posting stuff about Skater XL for the other platforms. And I'm like, hey, Switch version, that, that's still coming? I'd like to play this game portably. And I never, ever get a response. What do I think ended up happening here? I think maybe they bit off a little more than they could chew. Obviously, the Skater XL team isn't as big as someone like Activision, who was doing the Tony Hawk games, or EA, who's doing the skate games. So you don't have quite the budget you have with these other things. You don't have all the time and resources to develop a game, a version of a game for a platform that maybe is a little bit weaker than what the other platforms are on the market. It's not a straight up port because you actually have to change and downgrade some things. I don't think Skater XL is ever going to come out, but if any game on this list does end up coming out, it would be Skater XL. I'm just not holding my breath about it, and that's really disappointing for me. Younger kids might not know this, but there's a company called Konami that a lot of us that grew up in the 80s and 90s, we absolutely love them. You see how we get super excited about the Kawabunga collection coming to the Nintendo Switch and various platforms, the Castlevania collections, the Contra collections. Konami used to be an awesome video game company, but over the years, they've kind of drifted away from video games. They're more into pachinko machines and other things that make them easy money over in Japan, even though the pachinko market is kind of on a bit of a downturn right now. But they actually announced an exclusive Nintendo Switch game called Hypersports R. That was basically like an international track and field style game. International track and field was, of course, a previous Konami title that was available on the NES. These games were actually pretty fun. There was a decent one on the Nintendo DS as well that had a bunch of different characters from various Konami games like Solid Snake and stuff like that. So it was a cool little game. And this looked to be sort of in that vein, had a very cartoony art style. And really Olympic style games are can be pretty fun. When you think about games like the aforementioned International Track and Field on the NES or Decathlete on the Sega Saturn, there can be some fun had with these games. But as quickly as this game was announced as coming to the Nintendo Switch, Konami ended up canceling it. They never really gave a reason why. And you have to sort of sit here and wonder, well, they don't really make many video games, so why would they cancel the one video game that they were actually making? I don't think well, any of us will ever know. You know, maybe they just didn't see it as a profitable venture for them. So for whatever the case may be, Hypersports R will never come out, never come to the Nintendo Switch, and honestly, I think that's a bit of a shame. Now, multi-platform games are pretty common on the Nintendo Switch, probably more so than you would initially think looking at the differences in the types of hardware that these companies are developing for. Now, sometimes you end up having a bit of a delayed version of a game, or sometimes the game just ends up getting completely canceled. And that's what we have with this next game, Deliver Us the Moon. Now, Deliver Us the Moon was a game that came out on pretty much everything else, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, even Google Stadia got a version of the game, and it was basically an adventure game set in outer space. It was a game that looks pretty good good upon the graphical surface of the game. I don't know that I've ever played it though. I, I kind of want to play it and I felt like I have played it. I believe it's on Game Pass so maybe after this video I'll go ahead and check it out and play it on there. But this was a game I was kind of interested in. I like space games. I think space is like the final frontier of course and the game seemed to be decently reviewed. It was announced that the Nintendo Switch version of the game was indeed coming out until it was cancelled. Now, well, we don't get a lot of information on games when they get canceled, if it's just like a stealth cancel. We actually have a concrete message here from the development team, basically saying what is happening with this game. We had planned to include a Nintendo Switch in our release schedule. However, today we unfortunately bring news that we will no longer be releasing a Nintendo Switch version of Deliver Us the Moon. We have a duty to our players and our teams, and after careful consideration, we have discontinued the development. The decision was made based on a number of factors, not helped by the industry-wide stresses that have been felt by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has made every tech just a little bit harder. We understand the disappointment this may cause, and if you have pre-ordered the game for the Nintendo Switch, you can get in touch with a retailer to cancel this. Thank you for this patience and support. Other missions have only just begun, and we look forward to sharing news on where these rockets take us next. So this game was actually canceled in 2020, and 
you know, I, I I think out of all the games on this list, this one makes the most sense. They were planning a Nintendo Switch port of the game. Obviously, it's not a huge development team that was making this game. With COVID and lockdowns and all that stuff, you couldn't really do much of anything. So I completely understand this. Like I said, I'm going to go check out this game on another platform because it's always something that just sort of caught my eye. I like the vibe of the game for whatever reason. So I will be checking this out on other platforms. But if you're just a Nintendo Switch owner, you're screwed. You're screwed. And the final and fifth game we're going to talk about is a first-party Nintendo title that you're never going to play, Metroid Prime 4. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself, RGT, come on now. Obviously, there's been some trouble with Metroid Prime 4. You know, we first saw it back in 2017, but it's still coming out on the Switch. They're still doing Metroid games on there, and there's still going to be a Metroid Prime 4. And you're 100% correct. I'm not talking about Metroid Prime 4 being done by Retro Studios. I'm talking about Metroid Prime 4 being done by Bandai Namco. Because when we got that initial teaser trailer back in 2017 during E3 for Metroid Prime 4, which pretty much just had a splash logo of the title of the game and got a lot of people excited, it seemed like something was going on with it. Many people thought, well, if they're already showing a splash title for this, development must be pretty far along with it. But after years of wondering what was actually happening with this game back in January of 2019, we learned that... Well, Metroid Prime 4 wasn't quite as close as we were going to get. The game had been scrapped completely and given to Retro Studios. Now, where the Bandai Namco thing comes into play is that's just what's heavily rumored about this. But the reason that the game was scrapped is because of quality control issues. The game just didn't meet Nintendo's expectations when it came to a Metroid Prime game. So I really wonder, what did they do with Metroid Prime 4 that Nintendo was so adamant that they're like, we can't save this. We can't we can't do anything about this. We can't salvage this title. Because you got to imagine that probably was a bit of an expensive venture. You know, it's a first person shooter game that has a lot of action and adventure elements in it, unlike pretty much anything on the market. And to waste all that time and waste all that money on an unproven developer in that genre, because tell me a first person game that Bandai Namco made that everyone loves. It just seems like a very bizarre decision to even employ Bandai Namco in the first place instead of Retro Studios. There's a ton of different games that have been talked about, maybe worked on, and then got ended up canceling internally for Nintendo. But we've never seen a whole bunch of pomp and circumstance surrounding it like we have with Metroid Prime 4. I would love to see what Bandai Namco was doing with Metroid Prime 4, whatever their version of the game was, because it's a piece of gaming history. It evidently was so bad that Nintendo said, screw this, cancel the project we are moving on we're going back to retro studios and we're starting from the ground up what do you think that they did though let me know in the comments down below Alrighty, so that is just a handful of games for the Nintendo Switch that you will never play. Yes, there were other games that were canceled, but I wanted to do this list in sort of a different way, have a different variety of reasons why these games weren't coming out, because I felt like that made it more interesting than just being like, oh yeah, they canceled this game. Oh yeah, they canceled this game. So let me know in the comments section down below which of these games you would have liked to have seen on the Nintendo Switch, which of these games you would have ended up picking up, and as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share, hit the bell notification as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later